honor and I feel very humble that you thought of me in the time of COVID. What an unusual day today and what a momentous occasion. First of all, thank you Indus Valley Girls School and the director, Anita Prasad, for thinking of me, of course. I'm just looking at the way my screen is changing and I'm seeing the expectant and hopeful faces for their students and the parents who are attending this virtual meet. And it's fascinating. I was just thinking, do you all know that you're making history today? Not everything always has to be in a glorious, in a glitzy atmosphere. But what you students and your parents and your faculty today are doing, felicitating your students and their parents is amazing. How many people will be able to do such a thing, to have a virtual meet, to even think of it, to have the commitment to do it? Yes, we may think of doing online classes virtually because it's a necessity. We do our online video conferences to fulfill our essential jobs. But celebration online is such a marvelous thing. And I think the credit goes to your teachers and faculty and director and your trustees who have decided to do this for their students. Clearly, the Indus Valley World School family cares very deeply for its students and their parents. I now come to all these students who I can see today, at least in number and a few in pictures. You're going to step out into the world, aren't you? You've been in your family for up to class 10 or class 12. And now the time has come to cut your umbilical cord. And what a time to cut the umbilical cord in. The most uncertain, the most unknown. This happens to those who are strong enough to attract the unknown. This happens to those who have the ability to face an unknown future, an uncertain future, a novel future, a unique future, which they will create. And you are one of those hallowed few who in 2020 are going to begin your life. Lest I say this, we didn't even know that there were options that when we were growing up. For us, if we were called to school to celebrate an occasion, it was big enough. But today, you've been called out of school, into school, to celebrate your successes. And I'm really, really proud to be a part of this felicitation. I have two small messages to give to you all. It's a virtual meeting. I will not take up a lot of your time. As I was hearing the beautiful girl singing the Saraswati Vandana, and the beautiful faculty members doing this lovely dance of so many stars in the sky. Indeed, there are so, so many stars in the sky. You've all struggled very hard, worked very hard. And with you, your parents have given up their lives and done everything to support you, to be with you, to make sure you succeed. Yes, each of you bright young faces who are thinking whether I'm going to go to IIT or MIT or to Harvard or to Presidency University or to Ashoka University or wherever your life wants to take you, or to medical colleges. Whatever you do, you're already a success. You're a success because you chose this very difficult path in school to do and to learn and to be a part of the world system. Indeed, your school has the word world in its name. It's already shown you that there is a world where you are a very important part. I'd like to just take you back to the events of last week. And you'll know why I'm talk taking you there. I don't know how many of you were aware or knew of Srimati Amala Shankar, who died at the age of 101 a few days ago. She was one of the most celebrated dancers of her time, and she was 101. So you can imagine we are talking of a century. I had the good fortune and the blessings of Lord Sar of the Goddess Saraswati that I learned at her feet. And one of the most important things she taught me 
So you see, now today I'm not a professional dancer. I became a professional scientist and an educationist. But dance was my first love. And I learned it at Amalavi's feet. And you know what was the most important message that she gave us to each of her students? And I remember it and will remember it till the day I breathe. Her message was, always be you. Always be unique, novel, creative. She used to teach us dance and we never used to have to copy somebody's movement. We never had to learn a movement because we had to create a movement. And she taught us, never compete with anyone else. Please compete with yourself. So we never had exams in her school. We all passed out with certificates based on our performance, whether our performance was good or bad. But it is not because I was better than someone else. It doesn't work. You're only better than 10 people. You're only better than 100 people. You're only better than 1,000 people. The world is full of 7 billion people and growing. But can you be better than yourself? Can you be better today than you were yesterday? And will you be better tomorrow than you are today? It won't matter if you become a successful engineer. It won't matter if you get the highest marks or if you just learn something and marks didn't matter. If as long as whatever you learned <clears throat> was your learning, not what your uh, various teachers made you uh, understand with the best of their ability, but you didn't understand then you didn't learn. What you loved, what you held close to your heart, will serve you throughout life. So you could ask me now, if dance was your first love, why did you go to science? I loved dancing. I still love dance. Dance enriched my life so much, it taught me to follow every dream I had. I dreamt I would be a scientist. I dreamt I would be a teacher. And it was the learning from dance and my guru that this happened, that I could dare. I could dare to do what I dreamt. Do not ever, ever fall into a competitive rut. I use these words very negatively. And I do that because you are more important than the competition, each one of you. Each one of you is so, so precious, so necessary to change the world that if you spend your energy competing with your friend or your enemy or your neighbor, we will lose you. We will lose your talent. I can see your glowing faces and each of you is so beautiful. This lovely uh, young man with his mother smiling behind him this lovely little girl with her father smiling behind her and so many others. And your trustee, Mr. Gupta, is beaming with pride. Do you know that each and every one of you was created unique? The DNA in your genes. Now I go from dance to my, new, to my second passion, which was biology. We are 7 billion people on this earth and not two of us are identical. Even identical twins have something different from each other. So each of you is very precious and you are there to fill a role which is only done by you because what you have, no one else has. Now discover your strength, discover your dreams and chase them with your passion. Don't do something you don't like. It doesn't matter if you don't do anything for some time. You don't have to have that race. I have to finish class 12 when I'm 16. I have to finish my college when I'm 19. I have to finish my master's and my PhD by the time I'm 26. Nobody cares. Nobody cares that you got 91.2% or 81.5%. You yourself will forget your marks after one week. What will matter is what you took away from Indus Valley World School. You will remember your friends, you'll remember your teachers, you'll remember the scary moments when you were standing outside the class because you were caught doing something naughty. You will remember the time you played a prank on your teachers, the time you hid something from your parents. That's what will matter. 
you will not remember, oh, I could have got 10 more marks in my <clears throat> physics exam. Who cares? You like physics? You will live with it. You will not live with your marks because your marks are not relevant worldwide. Today, CBSC India gives you 95%, right? Does the American SAT system understand it? No. Does the Singaporean system understand it? No. But when you go to Singapore or to America or to UK or you go to South India from Calcutta, they will see your bright eyes. They will see your energy. They will see your passion for what you do, the questions you ask and how responsible you are. That's what matters. So, you know, be yourself. You... Unfortunately, we have to put you through these examination systems. Believe me, I don't believe in exams. If I could do away with exams, I would have said, let's cut. Let the student come to me at the end of the year and take my exam as a teacher and ask me, you didn't explain to the, this to me well. Instead of my asking you, what have you learned? Well? It should be the other way around. And we're working very hard at our end to change things. Of course, change takes a long time. It takes many generations. Maybe your children will see change. And even if that happens, I'll be very happy. And I hope you remember that I said this today. But the present system of education is really burdening you with the wrong things. It is telling you to become a competitor. It is telling you to gain high marks. It is telling you to give up your playing time. It is telling you to give up time with your family. No. Go back. Go back and do all that you wanted. I had enough time for dance and I didn't have enough time to go to tuition, so I didn't go to tuition. So I didn't come first in class, which is my badge of honor. I still made it through life. I did dance also. I did science also. I swam also. I played pranks on my family and I was a nuisance to most people, which was great. They're not going to forget me. So don't become boring, whatever else you do. However, remember to be responsible. You know, I, you're all, some of you are going to step into college and since I run a university, I must tell you, very fashionable and very heavy and very powerful to stage a protest against the establishment. Well deserved, well done. If you have the confidence to protest and for the right things, protest. Don't do it because you have to. Don't do it if you don't have a message. And if you protest for something, make sure you succeed in getting what you asked for. And don't ever do it in a way which is not dignified. We see nowadays, we were also students. We also bunked classes. Believe me, we did mass bunking. But we were really respectful of our teachers. We would never use disrespectful language towards our teachers. Nowadays, I see in the newspapers, whatever the students say about us is all over the front page of the newspapers. And I find it so shameful. <clears throat> I find it shameful not because it's me who they are saying it against. I have not done those things. But I'm, sh I'm ashamed of the students who step below their dignity and say things which don't become an educated person. This country, this society, and the world has fought for education. Till 200 years ago, women in this country did not, did not get educated. The first educationist was a woman called Savitri Bai Phule from Maharashtra. And she fought relentlessly for women to become educated. And in the 200-year-old history, it was her schooling of Fatima Sheikh and others who made sure that marginalized women also start study and education has become every human being's right. So tell me, how does an educated person step below his level and become something disrespectful? The first thing education teaches you is to respect yourself. Why? Because now you have knowledge. Knowledge is to be respected always. And knowledge of oneself is more important than physics or biology. Knowledge of your neighbor. You know, I've learned with 
great. Uh, I must tell you, it has been a I, my major learning has happened in the last six years as the vice chancellor of presidency. I thought I'd been to college and got a PhD degree and been all over the world. But what I learned about human beings in the last six years, I'm so lucky that I got this job so that I could see people up close. It's the first time I understood how many layers our society is made of, how many problems every individual has. You know, we judge people according to us. If I think something is right, then you have to do that. That's wrong. Please, please, please understand what is the problem that the other person has. You may not even know such a problem exists. And every problem has to be respected if we want to help and if we want to solve it. So compassion is something you should take away as you step out of Indus Valley World School today. Compassion, respect, passion, and knowledge. All of these will go a long way. Whether you really desire to stay in academics or not, it doesn't matter. But whatever you do, you must do it well. You want to become a householder? Do it to the level of perfection that people, and you will feel happy in every moment in your beautiful home. You want to become a shopkeeper? It should be a shop where everyone wants to go because the shopkeeper is a unique human being. You want to become an engineer? Make sure none of your bridges collapse. Any bridge that you have touched should not collapse. Look at our doctors today, how they are saving lives at the front line. What did society do to them two years ago? We were busy beating them up because somebody did it. Was that right? If there was a wrong to be corrected, does physical abuse of another person correct it? No, there's a way, which is what I wanted to say. There's a way to protest. There is a way to correct things. I want to leave you all today with a message that you are the most important person in your life. Now, that does not mean that the next person in the world is not important. But if you respect yourself, you will respect another person. One day you will stumble and the other person will help you, give you a helping hand. Remember to always support knowledge, constructive activity, even people getting over mundane problems. Some problem may not be important for you, but for another person. So to always have compassion, don't have time for things which you can clearly see are noise. I call it noise when people just do it to get noticed, not with any sincerity. So please respect sincerity and commitment. They will last longer than your marks. They will make you a better person. Now go out into the world and have fun. Fun does not mean going to a nightclub. Fun means doing what I love to learn, love to give, and love to embrace. That's fun. So go out into the world and have fun. Thank you very much for listening to me.